Good evening, everyone. Glad you're here. Uh, welcome to Engage Contemporary Praise at Northside. Um, thank you so much for joining us. And um, we have a we have a exciting evening in store for us. Uh, we want to welcome everyone in person as well as those who are joining us online. If you're online, say hello in the chat, and uh, we're glad you're here. Uh, we do have a U version event for this service, so if you'd like to follow along, scan that code with your mobile device. I've been excited about this service for a while now. Um, tonight is special because our youth band is going to be leading us, and at least two of them are graduating seniors, so this may be their last engaged service, for a while at least. Um, We've said it before, and we'll say it again tonight. These kids are an inspiration. And they are so talented, and they have spent weeks preparing for this service. What a blessing to join them as they use their gifts to lift up the name of the Lord. Let's pray as we begin. <clears throat> Almighty God, Lord of all creation, lover of life and of everything, we come together as your people and we offer you this gift of praise. We come with open hearts and open minds, and we pray that you will awaken us and inspire us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you for those that are here today, and we thank you for these young people standing before us, declaring their love for you and using their gifts to bring glory to your name. Bless them as they lead us and move us to respond with courage and commitment. May we build each other up and encourage each other as we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, uh, let's be standing together, and I uh, want to encourage you to come forward and fill up these front rows, and uh, maybe we'll feel like we're a little bit more together tonight, um, and let's welcome Connected. climb mountains if the mountains were where you hide oh how far I'd scale the valleys if you graced the other side and oh how long have I chased rivers from lowly seas to where they rise Against the rush of grace descending from the source of its supply. Cause in the highlands and the heartache, you're neither more or less inclined. I would search and stop at nothing, you're just not that hard to find. So I will praise you on the mountain And I will praise you in the mountains in my way You're the summit where my feet are So I will praise you in the valleys all the same No less God within the shadows No less faithful that leads me astray Cause you're the heaven where my heart is So I will praise and the heartache all the same Whoa, oh, oh Oh, how far beneath your glory Does your kindness extend the path from where your feet rest on the sunrise To where you sweep the sinners past And know oh, how fast would you come running If just a shadow me through the night and Trace my steps through all my failures And walk me out the other side who could dare ascend that mountain 
that valley hill called Calvary. But for the one I call Good Shepherd, who like a lamb was slain for me. So I will praise you on the mountain, and I will praise you in the mountains in my way. You're the summit where my feet are So I will praise you in the valleys all the same No less God within the shadows No less faithful when the night leads me astray Cause you're the heaven where my heart is Wherever I stand And if ever I walk through the valley of death I'll sing through the shadows my song of ascent Whatever I walk through, wherever I am Your name can move mountains wherever I stand And if ever I walk through the valley of death Sing through the shadows my song of ascent Cause wherever I am, I'll sing wherever I am Wherever I stand And if ever I am, I'll sing wherever I am I'll sing through the shadows my song of ascent We call grace a mighty river flowing upwards from a deep but empty grave. So I will praise you on the mountain, and I will praise you in the mountains in my way. You're the summit where my feet are. So I will praise you in the valleys all the same No less God within the shadows No less faithful when the night leads me astray Cause you're the heaven where my heart is In the highlands and the heartache all the same Empty hand held Such small sacrifice Not joined in my life Sing in vain tonight and The words I say The things I do Make my life so seem a smile to you. Let my love song sing to you. Let my love song sing to you. I want to sign your name to the end of this day. Lord, that my heart was true. Let my life so sing to you Lord, I give my life Living sacrifice To reach your world in need To be your hands and feet May the words I say the things I do Make my life song sing Bring a 
Hello. Yeah, yeah. So we we were starting, and I realized we hadn't checked this mic. So if there's that's my fault. I should have done that. But um, so this is sort of like a last second thing for me. Well, I say last second. I had about two weeks. Um, it was a combination of um, I think what was a joke from John and my inability to say no. Um, but. I like a challenge. I like to be able to, you know, let me find a pocket that's open. Uh, that one works. So I like to, um, I like the fact that I get whatever I can say up here. I get to say whatever I want. I have free reign over any lesson I wanted to do and uh, the possibilities were fuming. I sat down and was ready to type and I couldn't. Didn't have anything. So I did what any sensible person did. I went straight to YouTube. Um, and uh, I ended up going down uh, something I like to call the black hole of YouTube. Now I won't get into the, the, the full in-depth theory behind it, but the basic gist is you start in one place, you end in a different one, they don't correlate at all. So you sit in a chair for about 10 minutes, uh, well, what feels like 10 minutes, and three hours has passed, and you've started in something very philosophical and very intelligent, thought-provoking. So let's say you started with Baby Shark, and then you end in something like uh, top 10 Star Wars songs. They don't correlate, well, they're both songs, but it stretches, and you go to all these different places. But I ended, on a I ended up on a video that was entitled Most Satisfying Baseball Plays. And they were filled with triple plays, double plays, some, some pitches that would like move through space and time that you wouldn't even think a ball could move like that. And that got me thinking, what is my favorite part about baseball? What is my most satisfying part of baseball? So um, I thought about it for a second, and I thought, stealing home base. That's fun. It's a combination of all these different things happening at once. You're running towards home plate. The ball is either already with the catcher or the ball is about to get there. And everything seems to be running in slow motion. And the catcher turns towards you and everything has to be perfect. You have to be at the perfect angle on your slide to miss the catcher and get safe, you know? The catcher has to be just off on his tag that he misses you. Everything has to work out. And as you go in and you slide, dust flies through the air and there's this deafening silence before you hear the umpire yell, SAFE! And it's so satisfying. Because you just got a point for your team and the ball was not hit and you made it home. The guy was right there, he could have tagged you out. And then that's what sparked this SAFE. What does it mean to be safe? What is safe? Where did those go? Oh, cool. So, safe is to be protected from or not exposed to danger or risk. Like, uh, not likely to be harmed or lost. Thank you, Oxford Dictionary, for giving us exactly what I asked for. Sort of. So the thing got me thinking, well, is there a lesson in there? Okay, God protects us. God makes us safe. Oh, lesson done. So connected, you can come back up and everything is good, right? I think it goes a little bit deeper than that. So it got me thinking, who does God protect? And how does he protect? Because we know he protects us from Satan, from sin, although we do fall to those. It got me thinking, how does he do that? So, um, I like to think that some people outside the church don't believe that they are protected by God because of their past or because of what their future will be. But God does not protect the perfect. Because if God protected the perfect, he wouldn't protect anybody. Because no one is perfect. I'd like to think if we had like a meter above our heads, like uh, it would have like, it would add a number on for every mistake you made, every time you sinned. People would stop going outside. 
I know if I were going anywhere, I would be so cautious to not make a mistake because everyone would see that. God is not like that meter above your head. He doesn't say, oh, he ran a red light. Oh, he's going over the speed limit. No. Every time you make a mistake, it's not, take, it's not a tick mark and you don't see this full thing of tally marks when you get to heaven. It's wiped clean. It's wiped clean. The, the one person I think of in the Bible when I think of mistakes is King David because he makes a lot of them. He is seen as one of the most prolific figures. If you think about it, he's got two books written for his life. There are very few prophets in the Bible that you get their full life story. You get from very early on in his life when he's anointed to almost death and he takes over with the rest of his lineage with Solomon right after that. And so you get this full story. The longest book in the Bible was written by David and God protected him every step of the way. When he was being anointed, he knew he would mess up in the future. He knew that he would commit adultery. He knew that he would have many wives. He would kill a man for a wife. That happened. He knows what David's future is, but he still protects him and has him beat Goliath. David makes mistakes, and he still wants him to be king and lead the Israelites, so he protects him from Saul, who is also trying to kill him. Later on in life, he's already king, and he's protected from his own son who wants to conquer the kingdom. God protects David throughout his life, even though David was by no means perfect. David would have a really high number above his head. But God is not like that. He knows what David was in his heart. He knew what David was, even with the mistakes. He protected him through all the stuff he had done and been through and was going to go through. God does not protect the perfect. So now I got that out of the way. Now that I have who he protects, there's two groups. And I'm going to it's a little bit more complicated, but the basic gist is you have followers and non-followers. So followers, they're all protected the same way. But I like to think of, I'm going to read from Acts here. Uh, Acts. Hmm, where is it? Yeah. Uh, 7 verse 9. These sons became jealous of Joseph, so they sold him to be a slave in Egypt, but God was with him. Okay. Well, I want to fester on that one a little bit. You got sold by your family. You got sold by your brothers. But God was with you. God was with you. So you see, even in all of the bad that happened in Joseph's life, you see that God was with him the whole way. He, he guarded him under his wing. And even though bad things did happen to him, I mean, I just read he did get sold into slavery, but he did protect him. Because he didn't die when he went to slavery. Then he be, went up and became the right-hand man. Then he got kicked out, got thrown in jail, was in jail for a while. But then the cupbearer remembered. He got taken to Pharaoh, said, nope, well, there'll be a famine. Boom, right-hand man of Pharaoh. God was with him the whole way. Pharaoh could have said, I don't like that you're saying we're going to have a famine. I don't like you, we're going to die. You're done. Death. But no, 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 no. God took him. And Joseph stayed faithful his whole way through and saw all these different things that God was doing for him. He saw and had faith and trusted that God was going to protect him even when he was sitting in a jail cell. That is God working through. Now, it may not be that drastic. Now, I have one more, a little bit more drastic because there's a lot of these different things of followers being faithful to God and still having that connection and having that protectiveness through their life. But I'm only allowed like 20 minutes, so I only could pick like two. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit to Daniel 3, verse 24 through uh, 26. And I like this one, partly because of the names, but uh, the names are fun to say. 
Then King Nebuchadnezzar was very surprised and jumped to his feet. He asked the man who, was, who had advised him, Didn't we tie up only three men? Didn't we throw them into the fire? They answered, Yes, our king. The king said, Look, I see four men. They are walking around in the fire. They are not tied up, and they are not burned. The fourth man looks like a son of the gods. Small g. We'll get back to that. Then Nebuchadnezzar went and opened the blast furnace. He shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, come out. The servants of the Most High God, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. You see what I mean? Names are awesome. But I like this because this gets into the, the bridge between the followers and the non-followers. So the followers didn't want to bow to the gods of Nebuchadnezzar. So they were killed for it. They were thrown into a fire, into a furnace. When Nebuchadnezzar first looks in, he says it is a son of the gods. He believes it is a son of Nebuchadnezzar's gods. But as you keep reading, and as he goes down and opens the furnace, and this furnace is not like your, your typical oven. It's giant, this giant blast furnace, and the door is not light in the slightest. It's not this little tiny door to fit people in. He would have had to open it, use strength. A king was getting down to the base of this furnace to open it, to get these people out. And he says, servants of the Most High God. He recognizes now that it is not his gods, but their God that has protected them, that has saved them, that is with them in the fire, that is not making them burn. He understands now through their actions and their belief and their faith that their God protects. This bridges me into the non-followers. So most non-followers see that some people have a God. We have a God. Atheists recognize that people believe there's a God. So, what do we do about that? I believe that God protects everyone directly but the non-followers a little bit more through the followers. We go out with loaves and fishes who go and they comfort and they give food and they care and they protect these people who may not have a full faith in God and they see this protection, this loving God through us. They see the full power of our Christ through us. Teams like Sal Luis, Cozumel, Fisher House, Safe. All these different things show God's light through us. We show his protection and bring them into that light. We are all in the safe house of God. We are all protected under his wing, but some people don't realize it. We have all these scriptures and texts. We have the Bible. We have books that people have written in the past that tell us about all these different things. We learn about it every Sunday. We learn something new every Sunday. We hear, same, we hear sermons over and over again. How many times have we heard the prodigal son? How many times have we heard the story of Jesus? If you go out into the street and find someone, and you ask them their religion, they say, oh, I'm, I'm atheist. Ask them how many times they've heard the story of the prodigal son. Might surprise you. How many times have they heard the story of Jesus? I mean, Christmas comes around, but if they don't go to church during that time, they may only get it through a movie that they enjoy. We get these stories, and we know how to look for God protecting us in everyday life. But these people don't. So the mission, the missional aspect of going out and making disciples of other nations, bring them to realize, teaching them to see God protecting them in everyday life. If Joseph wasn't a follower, he would think he's the luckiest man alive. He would have no idea that 
It was God helping him through his life. Bringing people, going out and showing the love of Christ and bringing people into the realization that they are protected by God and showing through ourselves, through our hearts, through the hearts and souls God had given us, we can show the love to them. I want to wrap up. I may be a little short, but... I don't know when I started. I mean, um, we're not perfect. Followers are not perfect. There's been there's been a there's been a misconception between followers and non-followers. Non-followers think, oh, we need to be perfect before we can go to church. Oh, well, I sin all the time. I'm not worthy to go to church. We come to church thinking we need to look perfect. I don't. <laughs> people, people will wear suits and ties. Some will wear nice button-up shirts. I mean, I've worn the same, well, not the same. It's a different black V-neck. But I've worn a black V-neck for a good majority of my life. So, but there's not just seeing your physical appearance, but your spiritual appearance, needing to look perfect. We don't need to look perfect because God does not protect the perfect. God's protection is not the umpire waiting on you to slide in at home, waiting on you to touch the bag before Satan tags you out. No. God is the umpire that calls you safe no matter if you're tagged first or not. And Satan's the catcher that gets mad when he thinks he tagged you first, but the umpire's final say. You don't have to have the right position to go in and slide. And everyone's protected. I mean, and now what we're protected from, that's a whole different topic. That's a whole thing that might be above my pay grade for now. But going out and bringing these people in, making them see that you don't have to be perfect to be protected by God, to be in God's safe house, to be under his wing. You don't have to be perfect to go out and bring more people to the realization. Through your love and kindness and comfort and your protection of others, they see God's protection of others. Can you play with me? Dear Lord, thank you so much for giving us the ability to come here and share your love, to worship in your name. Thank you for giving us the sense of community where we're able to congregate and have fellowship with one another, to lean on each other, to cry with one another. I pray that everyone here feels your presence tonight. And that everyone will leave this place having felt something new in your love. Please help us see your light. And help us see your protection in our everyday lives. Show us your glory. And it's your son's name we pray. Amen.
in the soil I now surrender you are breaking new ground so I yield to you into your careful hand when I trust you I don't need to understand make me a vessel Make me an offering Make me whatever You want me to be God, I came here with nothing But all you have given me Jesus, bring new wine out of me In the crashing in the pressing you are breaking new wine in the soil i now surrender you are breaking new ground you are breaking new ground vessel make me an offering make me whatever you want me to be God I came here with nothing but all you have given me Jesus bring new wine out of me Jesus bring new wine out of me Jesus bring new wine out of me cause where there is new wine there is new power there is new freedom and the kingdom is here I lay down my old flames to carry your new You want me to be God, I came here with nothing But all you have given me Jesus, bring new wine out of me Jesus, bring new wine out of me Jesus, bring new wine out of me. I heard this prayer um, earlier this week, and it was just so beautiful. Uh, I wanted to share it with you tonight, and that was before hearing Zach's message. It's really a prayer for both followers and non-followers. So let's pray together. Abba Father, Source of wonder. Help us see with wonder. Depth of mystery. Help us find delight in truth so profound that they surpass all knowing. Fountain of compassion. Help us see with compassion. Bringer of justice. Help us see with justice. Revealer of truth. Help us see what is real. Holy wisdom, whose presence fills our ever-expanding universe, help our horizons to ever expand. And light of glory, help us to see with humility and awe. 
For it's in Jesus we come. Amen. When the road runs dead You can see a way I don't And it makes no sense But you say that's what faith is for When I see a flood you see a promise When I see a grave you see a door And when I'm at my end You see where the future starts I don't know how you make a way, but I know you will. I don't know how you make a way, but I know you will. You've been good on every promise, from Eden to Zion, through every dead end and out of that grave. I don't know how you make a way, but I know you will. When the world's on fire, it's not like you don't have a plan. And when the earth gives way on this rock, your church will stand. Cause nothing has ever once surprised you, and nothing has ever made you flinch. And when it all shakes out, the gates of hell don't stand a chance. I don't know how you make a way, but I know you will. I don't know how you make a way, but I know you will. You've been gone on every promise from Eden to Zion, through every dead end and out of that grave. I don't know how you make a way, but I know you will. Pulled my heart from Egypt You carved a road through sea From all my chains to endless praise The story ends in you And when we cross that Jordan Look back at where we've been From all our chains to endless praise The story ends in you my heart from Egypt You carved a road through sea From all our chains to endless praise The story ends in yo I don't know how you make a way But I know you will I don't know how you make a way But I know you will You've been good on every promise from Eden to Zion Through every dead end and out of that grave I don't know how you make a way But I know you will I know you will All right, thank you all so much for coming tonight. Has it been... Has it been a blessing to be here tonight? Let's give them more, one more round of applause, okay? I, I just, I say this all the time, but I, I never get tired of it. I love it when you get to see this, um, because it's just, it's just what I get to see all the time, and, you know, I can't take any credit for it. So, like, they're just amazing, and you, by being here tonight, uh, I mean, you are loving on them, and, and that's so important, and I'm so thankful that everyone is here and uh, that we've been praising God tonight. So thank you for being here. Um, our, our worship tomorrow will begin at 9 a.m. like usual. And then a couple of notes for Engage this summer. We're going to take a break for the month of June, but we invite everyone to join us at the San Antonio Song Fest, which is an acapella worship celebration presented by Keith Lancaster's Praise and Harmony. 
It'll be Saturday, June the 11th from 2 to 4 p.m. at MacArthur Park Church of Christ. Everyone is invited for a taste of heaven on earth as we sing and worship with all of our hearts. So that'll be in June. And then you can mark your calendars. Our next Engage Contemporary Praise services are scheduled for July 16th and August 13th. So we hope to see you at both of those. Let's stand for one final song. mercy, King of all kings, even in darkness I will sing, I will sing, cause I've been set free, running out of the grave, set free, all my sin washed away, set free, breaking out of the chains, and I'm alive, oh my soul, lift up the name of the one who saves he reigns forever oh my soul lift up your praise i will rise and bless the lord oh my soul 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 high as the heavens deep as the sea how great your love that rescued me rescued me cause i've been set free running out of the grave set free all my sin washed away set free breaking out of the chains and i'm alive oh my soul lift up the name of the one who saves he reigns forever oh my soul lift up your praise i will rise and bless the lord oh my soul oh my soul no. oh my soul oh my soul oh my soul i will sing your goodness i will sing your grace I will love you all my days, all my days. Here we go. I will sing your goodness. I will sing your grace. I will love you all my days, all my days. Oh, my soul, lift up the name of the one who says he reigns forever. Oh, my soul, lift up your praise. I will rise and Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, oh my soul, oh my soul, oh my soul.